Good morning. This is the SST screen restretching clamp system that we're going to be doing a training video on this morning. The SST clamps are a beige colored clamp that has one air cylinder in them. We are setting up to do a 23 by 31 inch frame, which means that we have to have the, the base of the clamps touching or almost touching each other. So we have two here for the 20 inch, 23 inch, three here for the 31, two, and three. The clamps are made up of a clamping head which has a urethane gripper, flat square on the bottom, and two round grippers on the top, and a leveler. The lever levelers are to be set at an inch and a half tall and even all the way across. As you're inspecting, before you start the day, you inspect to make sure that your urethane is all put in the correct place and that your stretching device tight. Uh, as we know from doing an earlier screen, with okay, the urethane dowel rod on that clamp needs to be adjusted and pushed up inside. The jaw strength is adjusted by putting a Allen wrench into the screw hole and then tightening these and we know that this unit was loose so we'll go ahead and tighten this one. That's just a slight adjustment. Anytime the clamp moves during the stretching process, that means that the clamp will have to be adjusted. All right, what we'll do now is we know that the fabric is for this frame? 160. 160 mesh, so we'll go over here mm -hmm. to the cutting table and we will measure out, Hang on. measure out the uh, length of the, of the fabric. The bolt's been cut in half, uh, so that we're using one, just cutting one side. You're going to measure this off to be how long? Uh, we usually go four inches, three to four inches beyond our actual size of the frame, so it's easier to line it up for the clamp. So how long will you pull this for the 2331? Uh, approximately four, maybe four foot by the 32 that it's already cut at. So the 32 is going in the 23 inch side, and then we're, we have 31 inches, so we want to go 36 inches. And that's marked on this table, 36 inches? Yes, it is pre-marked. Okay, so go ahead and cut it over. All right, now we take the frame. Yeah. And we got the 23 by 31 frame, and we put it into the clamps. No, you have to frame it. So we put the 23, the frame in. First thing that we do is make sure that it's set on the levelers. And then we wipe off any debris that's on the frame from the grinding process. And we have a little tilt up here. I'll just grab another one. Nope, take that one and put it on there. No, that's okay. That'll be fine. You can go over that. You can. Doesn't have to be perfect. We've discussed that before. All right, as he puts the frames in, there's a upper lip that holds the frame from being pulled into the clamp. So we make sure that the clamps, that the frame is in and secure and level. That doesn't matter. So we'll go ahead and, out and mount the fabric down to the, into the clamps. one side and going to the opposite side pulling the fabric tight but not overly tight trying to get any wrinkles out of the fabric Press it down and then go to the first side and then go to the opposite side These are air clamps that have a gauge uh, and an on-off switch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why don't you 
show, can we get right onto the gauge? Um. The gauge has been pre, the air pressure has been three, preset to between three and 3.5 pounds per square inch. Once the, the clamps are clamped down, we go ahead and we turn on the air by throwing this, the lever over to the side. The clamps immediately jump up. And what we have done then, as you can see from the screen, is that it's taken all wrinkles and we have a, a, slight, a slight pressure in the middle. What we're looking for here is if there are any burrs in the frame or if there's any slippage of the clamps. If there's not, then we go back to our pressure gauge and we increase it depending upon the mesh count. Uh, for this mesh count, we are going to go to 26 to 28. 26 to 28 newtons. I'm sorry, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pulse the fabric. Okay. Then we put our newton meter. And the newton meter reads the amount of pressure that's on the fabric. Currently, it is at about nine newtons. We want to bring this screen pressure up to 26 newtons, so he'll just increase the pressure. to 26 to 28 newtons. You go a little bit at a time, you don't bring it all up at one time. Now, if we can have the camera over here, we notice that this clamp has slipped. This clamp has slipped in position, which means that we have to tighten this bolt before we do the next frame to make sure that we get an even pull. Uh, and we can also notice that in the corner one that it's also moved. That happens, it's not a big deal, you adjust after you're done with the frame. So at this point now we'll take a look at the Newton meter in all four corners looking for a hot spot or low spot. So we want to be within two to four Newtons of the 26 that we brought it to. All right, then we take it back in the middle and we ping the screen one time, two times to make sure that we have the, the best that we have. Okay, at this point in time, we take the Newton meter off of the screen and we put it in the case because it's an expensive tool. Uh, we'll now grab, we have two different thicknesses of glue. For 90% of what we do, we use the medium thickness glue. We start with putting the, the glue, the, the tip of the bottle, almost all the way to the first edge corner that we're going to do. And then putting a small bead, we go about 80% of the way down the profile, trying to keep it in the middle as much as we can. And then we stop. Then we grab a orange pre-cut squeegee. And then we, we work the glue so that we're with a downward pressure with the angle towards you. We try to make sure we catch the inside edge of the glue. And then we go with a very quick motion all the way across to the other side. Okay, now we go and we do the outside edge. This is not a perfect science. As we can see here, it's a much lighter color, so we don't have enough glue. So we, we're going to put a drop of glue in the glue area before that, and just a small amount, and then we're going to go ahead and make the pass again on the outside. We still have a space here that we have to do, so we're going to drop another peep, drop of glue there. Sometimes this is caused by the frame being ground unevenly and the corner being down. You can't always get it all but that is as good as we're going to do. Then we go to another corner. We start almost at the edge, of the outside edge of the corner, 
laying a bead of adhesive down going 80% of the way of the area that we're going to cover. Again, trying to catch the inside edge first with a lot of downward pressure. We go quickly all the way across the frame to the other side. And then we go and we try to catch the inside or the outside edge. All right, now we see the area. Now there's a puddle of glue that we can see over here. So we're going to take that and we're just going to push that across. All right. Uh, we have a lot that we have missed. And again, you can tell that because you'll, the area that's not been, that doesn't have the glue where it should be is a very bright white or silver color where the, where the glue is is a gray color. All right, and he'll go ahead and keep doing that in all the parts that we've missed. Missed a huge section here. I put the dot there. All right. All right. We do the next side, same procedure, taking the glue and putting it almost on the edge. We don't want to leave a heavy bead. It's a relatively thin bead, but the same width all the way across. Catching the inside edge first with even pressure and a quick very firm downward stroke and we catch the other side and then we go and we fix any spaces that didn't have enough glue as you get better at this you'll do this less and less all right we only have one side left to do so on this side we're going to start the glue on the glue that we've already done because it's the last side and then again take a bead trying to keep it in the middle trying to keep it the same width 80 percent of the way there and then again pushing it down to try to get to the inside edge making sure that we cover that with the same firmness and then we catch the inside edge All right, then we go and check the places that we've missed. All right, there's still a little spot, so he's gonna check that. There we go. Fantastic. All right, at this point in time, the screen has been, has the glue has been adhered. What we have to do is harden the glue using an aerosol from Spray Away. All it takes is a touch. We have to make sure that we catch the corners very well. It's an immediate bonding of the adhesive. As soon as the spray hits it, it's bonded. And then we go and hit the fourth side. Done correctly, the adhesive now is bonded to the aluminum. We go back to our controller, we turn it off, releasing the pressure from the clamp. We adjust the, the pressure gauge for the next frame. So we reduce it from where it is now that brought it up to 26 newtons, back down to approximately three to five pounds per square inch of pressure. We take our Newton meter now, and we make sure that the screen has kept the same tension level. And the tension level is? 24. How much? 24. 24 Newtons. We lost a little bit, and that was from the, the slippage of the clamp. 24 Newtons is acceptable. Take the Newton meter off. Open the clamps. Remembering which clamps we have to adjust. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Once all the clamps are in the open position, the screen is ready to be trimmed. We take the uh, screen out, take it to the trimming table. And hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Air pressure's on. Okay, go ahead. Uh, why is it just clamp off? Go ahead. Taking a clean, sharp edge knife underneath the fabric, angling it back towards the frame, we pierce the fabric, and then with a strong motion keeping pressure against the frame edge, we pull the knife through the mesh. It's important that we trim immediately after we glue because the glue gets continually harder and harder and you will not be able to get the knife through the blade if you wait too long. about that now. You're not going to be using it. Guys, just go ahead and get this done. You don't have any time. This process should take five minutes to do a frame completely. Okay. Uh, let's go look at it. Go ahead and keep doing frames uh, and take a look at your start time and your finish time. And it should take five minutes. Let's go ahead and take a peek at it. Sure.